Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for Kairi or Shion from Kingdom Hearts, and like and subscribe for more exciting fights next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Poison from Street Fighter, a girl with a whip, a ton of attitude, and no poison damage whatsoever. Like, I get she was named after a hair metal band, but you'd expect a character named Poison to have, I don't know, some poison damage? I guess the Street Fighter names have never made sense. You got M. Bison, Vega, and Balrog, all different people in different regions, and then just some dude named Ken? That's silly. <laughs> Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need a whip, which isn't the best weapon in Dungeons & Dragons, so we'll make it more useful. Next, we need to be ready to get up close and personal if someone gets in on our whip. Finally, we need to keep it light. You don't have washboard abs to not show them off. Who cares if they make you more vulnerable to claw hands? For sets, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for sets if you want, just make sure you've got some solid muscles. Dexterity will be number one, though. It's more helpful right away. We're sort of going to kick things off with nimbleness and then move into strength as the build goes on. Strength is next. We need both the physical stats, since we're not really zen enough to be a monk, and definitely need unarmed attacks. Constitution after that, if you're rocking a bare midriff in a fighting tournament, you need abs of steel. Follow that up with charisma. You like to play music almost as much as you love diving into the mosh pit. I think it's really just an excuse to find mosh pits. Wisdom is a bit low. You're a bit headstrong and will dump intelligence. You don't really need the brain if you have enough brawn. Poison is a human, but if she was a grung, she could have poison and use her tongue as a whip. That's just a different character, though. For this character, grab the fighting initiate feat for unarmed fighting deal 1d6 bludgeoning damage with an unarmed attack 1d8 if you're not holding the whip and you can deal a d4 of damage to a creature you have grappled so wrap people up if you want to we'll get even better at that later for now bump your dexterity and constitution scores with your two free points take persuasion for your skill of choice and the gladiator background for acrobatics and performance skill so you know you're putting on the best show possible we'll kick things off as a barbarian giving you two skills from the barbarian list like athletics and intimidation for arms so big they're a little scary we're mostly here for unarmored defense Defense, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and constitution modifier when you're not wearing armor. So investing in dexterity instead of strength as a barbarian isn't actually the worst play, it's just more of a defensive move. It's not as good with rage, which lets you add extra damage to strength-based attacks, gives you advantage on strength checks and saves, and lets you resist bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for a minute. So yeah, that works better with strength, but you can use your strength with a whip even though it is a finesse weapon. But the whip will get better when we jump over to fighter, because first level fighters get a fighting style, like dueling, to add two to the damage of a weapon you're holding one handed like a whip. A whip is a melee weapon with 10 feet of reach, it's finesse, so you can use your strength or dexterity modifier with it. It deals a pretty weak d4 slashing damage. The plus 2 helps, and you can add rage damage on top of that, but then you have to use your strength modifier so it's actually less accurate and barely does more damage. This would be easier as a monk, but again, that's not really poison, we need strength and speed. You also get second wind here, letting you recover 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest, helping you get ready for round 2. Second level fighters get action surge, letting you burn some meter for an extra action once per short rest in the same turn. You don't drop combos, you drop opponents to the ground when you win the round. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype, battle masters can put the whip into overdrive thanks to maneuvers, which lets you use four superiority die, which are d8s you get on a short rest. Tripping attack forces a strength saving throw on a creature, failing that they're knocked prone, giving you advantage on follow up attacks so you can stomp all over them, you get to add your superiority die to the damage. Lunging attack has 5 feet to the range of a melee attack, so a 15 foot whip to really stretch out if you don't feel like getting close, you add the superiority die to the damage again. Evasive footwork doesn't add any damage, instead you add your superiority die to your AC while you're moving, helping you cartwheel on a tournament full of people spamming hadokens. You also get a set of artisan's tools and instruments are technically a separate thing, that's bad. What about calligraphy though? You could write a treble clef, that's impossible to do without training. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement, start with dexterity, since that will help our AC and our whip damage. I know it seems silly to start as a barbarian if I'm not focusing on strength right away, but the extra HP you get from starting there and the unarmored defense are really going to pay off. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action, and up to four attacks with an action surge, so you could burn all your superiority die in a single combo for a really super move. Sixth level fighters get another ability score improvement, cap off that dexterity for maximum dodging ability and maximum whipping, at least for now. We can push it further, but plus 7 damage per hit is solid. 
Speaking of 7, 7th level battle masters can know their enemy. Letting you know a creature's strength, dexterity, constitution, HP, AC, fighter levels, or total levels, you get two pieces of information for every minute of study. I'm guessing they're going to be worse at everything except for maybe fighter levels since you did the barbarian dip, but you also get two more maneuvers and another superiority die to use to make yourself better. Parry lets you reduce damage by your dexterity modifier plus your superiority die as a reaction to take a little chip damage instead of a big old hit. And feigning attack lets you give yourself advantage on attack as a bonus action and add your superiority die to the damage. Fake them out by making it seem like you're going to swing the whip even when you're not. Big bamboozle plays. 8th level fighters get an ability score improvement. I think constitution is the next place we should invest for more HP and better AC when you're not wearing armor. I guess it's worth noting medium armor would work fine on this build. You have proficiency and can still rage in it as long as you're not wearing the heavy stuff. But come on, you gotta flex on them. Sun's out, gun's out. Hot girl summer. 9th level fighters get indomitable, letting you re-roll a failed saving throw once per long rest. Try to use this on the stuff you're going to succeed on, so basically anything physical. Your soft stats aren't great. Don't sweat it. Someone else can handle the brainy bits in the party. 10th level battle masters get improved combat superiority, bumping your superiority die up to a d10 so you can whip it. Whip it well. You can also grab two more maneuvers. Repost lets you make an opportunity attack after someone misses you with a melee attack and add your superiority die to the damage. Make sure your punish game is strong. It probably is. You do own a whip. Disarming attack lets you force a strength saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they have to drop an item they're holding. Fighting you is hard enough. It's even harder when you don't have a weapon. Most people in Street Fighter don't have a weapon, but Vega gets to bring knife hands for some reason. 11th level fighters get an extra attack for three attacks with your action and up to six with an action surge if you spend all of your superiority die that's 6d4 plus 5d10 plus 42 damage in a single round that's a pretty solid combo 12 level fighters get another ability score improvement and now it's time to start investing in your strength for better unarmed attacks pretty much all of your maneuvers will work with your punches except for the ones that aren't attacks oh also i reflexively called unarmed attacks punches they can be kicks you're really more of a kicker 13th level fighters get another use of indomitable for another opportunity to re-roll a failed saving throw you can even use this on death saving throws or to resist poisoning. I know you don't actually resist poison, but you could. You should have something to do with poison. 14th level fighters get another ability score improvement. Keep getting your strength higher so you can send your enemies higher when you throw them up in the air, not like digestively. You're not Kirby. 15th level battle masters get relentless, meaning that if you start a combat with no superiority die, you get one to use. Don't be afraid to burn the meter. You don't get any points if you finish the match without spending it. You also get a sixth superiority die you can spend on two more maneuvers. Grappling strike lets you grapple a target as a bonus action and add your superiority die to the grapple check. This is why we're investing in strength so you can do the whip wrap up slammy thing. Pushing attack lets you force a strength saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they go 15 feet away from you. If you don't feel like getting close to someone, hey, I get it. It's been a rough couple of years. 16th level fighters get another ability score improvement. Cap off your strength for maximum grapples, unarmed attacks, and now you can use your whip while raging for an extra two damage on each hit. That's plus nine while dueling and up to six attacks per round, letting you dish out some serious punishment. 17th level fighters get another use of action surge and indomitable for six attacks a round, two rounds in a row, and less dying. If you feed the meter, the meter feeds you. I'm assuming you're winning some money with all this fighting. 18th level battle masters get another improved combat superiority die thingy. Now your dire d12s for a whip attack that is better than a barbarian's battle axe six times a day. Our capstone is the 19th level of fighter for one last ability score improvement. More constitution means 20 more HP at this level and another bump up for your AC. Some people have rock hard abs, but you take that literally. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you are very durable with 19 AC no matter what you're wearing and over 200 HP if you're rolled well. You're also bringing some serious pain, dealing 6d4 plus 6d12 plus 52 damage in a single round if you rage and drop all your superiority die during during an action surge, that's 100 damage with average rolls. Big ouchies. Other rounds, you're still dealing consistent damage since every whip attack can deal plus 9 damage if you're raging just from modifiers 3 times per round. For weaknesses, your soft stats aren't great. Low wisdom means hold person. Low intelligence means illusion issues. It's rough stuff. You also invested in strength and dexterity, and there are reasons to do that, but constitution would have been a better option, especially since you could use medium armor and medium armor master to stop your dex buffing at 16. Finally, spending all your superiority die in one round is cool, but it also means you run out of superiority die in one round. That's bad. It's also bad for the enemy, though. Burn the meter, crack the whip, and flex all over the dummies who thought they could beat you. Just watch out for psychic-based enemies. It would be rough if you had to fight a Balrog. Wait, shouldn't that be fire damage? Who names these characters? Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for Kyrie or Shion from Kingdom Hearts, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.